Okay, this symbol here is the second derivative. It is the um, DDX notation. So when you take the derivative, officially what you're doing is you got some function here and you're going to apply this operation of taking the derivative and the symbol that you could use would be d over dx so if you got some kind of y in here some function y or some f of x whatever you want to call it when you do the d dx what you get out is dy dx or 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 it could be written as df dx and that's the derivative normally we use a prime symbol for it now imagine doing that again imagine having dy dx and then when doing ddx again to that so it would be a second derivative it'd be it'd be ddx of ddx of y second derivative now look at this symbol there the two d's come together as a d squared and the two dx's come together and we write that it looks a little strange but it's like dx squared it's really the whole dx that gets squared and then, you know, there's the y. And so, that's why the notation is what it is. But let's go ahead and do it. So, the first derivative, dy dx, is going to be bring down the 4. Take x squared plus 1 to the 3. The power rule, that's the outside function. The fact that you have something to the 4th power. Bring down that 4. Take that something to the 3rd power. And then what you do is you multiply by the derivative of the inside. Which is going to be 2x. And so that simplifies to be 8x times x squared plus 1 quantity cubed. Okay. Uh, in general, if you're taking a function raised to a power and you want to take its derivative, you bring the power down, you take that same function to the one less exponent, and then you multiply by the derivative of that function. That's how it works in general. Okay, great. Now, uh, we're ready to take a second derivative, d squared y dx squared, but we're going to have to use a product rule. So we take derivative of the first times the second, put a plus sign, leave the first alone, and take the derivative of the second, same thing again, bring down the three, take it to the two, don't change the inside. And remember to multiply that by the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. Okay, so we got an 8 times x squared plus 1 quantity cubed. And, uh, gosh, there's a lot going on there. So 8, a 3, and a 2. 8 times 6 is 48. Um, x and x is x squared times x squared plus 1 quantity squared. We could simplify this, but this is our second derivative here d squared y dx squared uh, they share some things in common uh, both we, we could be done now but let's go ahead and take out the 8 and let's take out the x squared plus 1 to the 2 since so we have two of them and then three of them we can take out um, two of them it would leave us with an x squared plus 1 from the first term and from the second term it would leave us with a 6 as far as the coefficient and x squared and then we could put that together as a 7x squared. So an 8, x squared plus 1 squared, and then inside the square bracket, 7x squared plus 1. Wow. That is your second derivative. Uh, sorry if I went kind of fast there. Hopefully you can uh, go back and make sure you can follow. Um, let's look at the next question, too, while we're at it here. And this is a continuity question. A continuous function is, is one that has no breaks in it. Um, x squared plus 1 is a parabola. It has no breaks in it. Cx plus 3 is a line. It has no breaks in it. But what, what this function is, is a piecewise function. And so um, it's x squared plus 1 only if x is less than 1. And then it turns into this line. This, so it's a parabola at first. And then it changes into a line. It changes into a totally different function. And for it to be continuous, what you need to happen is those two parts need to meet up. You need the limit 
as x goes towards 1 on your function from the left hand side to be equal to the limit as x goes towards 1 from the right hand side. They have to match up. Left hand side has to meet right hand side. Usually when I have a, um, a piecewise function I like to write a number line and on that number line put the identity of the function. When you're smaller than 1 you're a parabola but when you're bigger than 1 you're this line and there's this number c in here that we have to find. Our job is to find out what c is. And so for the left hand side we'd be using the parabola for the right hand side we'll be using the line. And so I gotta put x squared plus 1 in here and take the limit as x goes to 1 from the left And then uh, that'll give you just, you plug a 1 in, nothing to stop you. So that'll be 1 squared plus 1. The parabola is heading towards 2. The limit as x goes towards 1 from the right, you would use this cx plus 3 and plug a 1 into that for x. And you get c plus 3. So you got some parabola who's headed to 2. You got some line who's headed to c plus 3. What you want to happen is you want the line to meet up with the parabola. And so at x equals 1, we want the line to meet up with the parabola. It could be in a sharp point like that. That's fine. It's continuous. You can draw it without lifting your writing utensil. It wouldn't be differentiable. You wouldn't be able to take the derivative at that sharp point. But we need for them to match up. We need these two to be equal to each other. Where the parabola is headed should be equal to where the line is headed. And then that'll tell us what C is. The fact that C better be negative 1. And so what that looks like, let me just show you real quick. X squared plus 1 is a parabola. Shift it up one unit. And so it looks like that. And then it grows here. And so when X is 1, it's at a 2. Okay. Now the line is a negative X plus 3. And so up here at 3, it comes down here at 3 connects them, but um, when x is 1, uh, negative 1 plus 3 is a 2. They do meet up, and, uh, and so we made sure it happened that uh, the function is continuous when c is negative 1.